26% of an entire country is below sea level. 17 million people living where there should be ocean. But here's what nobody's talking about. The Netherlands isn't just surviving. They're expanding, building floating cities, creating permanent land three meters below the surface. And what they just revealed will change everything you think about the future of coastal cities. The future isn't coming. It's already here. Imagine building an entire city where there was only ocean before. We're not talking about simple landfills. We're talking about creating permanent, habitable, sustainable land. Meters below sea level. The Netherlands isn't just fighting against water. They're making water work in their favor. And this is happening right now, while you're watching this video. Here's the brutal truth. Two thirds of the Dutch population live in areas that would be completely submerged without human intervention. Amsterdam sits seven meters below sea level. Rotterdam sits six and a half meters below. These aren't just statistics. This is 17 million people living where there should be ocean. But here's where the story gets really interesting. The Netherlands isn't just defending itself, it's expanding. In the last 20 years, the Dutch created more than 7,000 hectares of new land. That's bigger than Manhattan. They're literally increasing the size of the country while sea levels rise. How is this possible? Let's start with the project that redefined everything, the Delta Works. Built after the catastrophic flood of 1953 that killed 1,835 people, this isn't just a system of dikes. It's an engineering feat valued at 5 billion euros that the American Society of Civil Engineers called one of the seven wonders of the modern world. Think about that. On the same level as the Pyramids of Giza, the Panama Canal, the system includes the Maceland Barrier, two floating gates that are larger than the Eiffel Tower laid down. Each gate weighs 6,800 tons. When a storm approaches, these colossal gates close automatically in less than two hours, protecting Rotterdam and four million people from catastrophic flooding. But here's the brilliant detail. They remain open 99.9% .9 of the time, allowing ships to pass freely. It's invisible protection. If you think that's impressive, wait until you hear what comes next. The Maasvlakte 2 project isn't just a landfill. It's a 1,000-hectare port extension built entirely on the North Sea. It cost 3 billion euros, took five years, and used 220 million cubic meters of sand dredged from the ocean floor. To put that in perspective, that's enough sand to fill more than 88,000 Olympic swimming pools. But here's the crazy part. Marsvlakte 2 wasn't built just for today. It was designed for a sea level rise of one meter by the year 2100. Dutch engineers are literally building for a future that hasn't arrived yet. The new land included artificial dunes of 17 meters high that function as natural defense and three kilometer beaches that absorb wave energy. Nature and engineering working together. And the result, the port of Rotterdam, already the largest in Europe, can now receive even larger ships handling 469 million tons of cargo annually. That represents a commercial flow of 52 billion euros per year. The Netherlands isn't just surviving the water, they're profiting from it. Here's something that will give you goosebumps. The Ijberg project in Amsterdam. Seven connected artificial islands creating space for 45,000 residents. But they're not just houses, they're floating houses. More than 100 residences built on pontoons that rise and fall with the water level. When the tide rises, the houses rise. When it falls, they fall. It's liquid architecture. Each floating house costs between 250,000 and 800,000 euros. They have submerged concrete foundations weighing up to 100 tons for stability. They're connected to sewage, water and electricity systems through flexible pipes. And here's the most impressive part. They can last more than 100 years. This isn't a temporary solution. It's the future of coastal urban living. If you think that's innovative, wait. 
The Rotterdam Floating District is taking this to another level. A three-story floating pavilion with 1,000 square meters, housing urban farms, restaurants, and exhibition spaces, completely self-sustaining. Solar panels generate electricity. Collection systems capture rainwater, and indoor vertical farms produce fresh food year-round. It's a city within a city that floats. Now let's talk about something truly revolutionary, the Room for the River program. For 700 years, the Netherlands built higher dikes to contain rivers. But in 2006, they completely changed their strategy. Instead of fighting against water, they decided to give it space. The concept? Let rivers flood designated areas during intense storms. The program cost 2.3 billion euros. It involved more than 30 projects along 710 kilometers. Along the Rhine, Meuse, Waal and Ixel rivers, they created controlled floodplains, lowered dikes in strategic areas, dug lateral channels, and even relocated an entire dike 400 meters inland. And it worked. The discharge capacity of the Waal River increased by 7%. The flood risk in critical areas fell dramatically. But here's the twist. These floodplains aren't wasteland. They're parks, recreation areas, nature reserves, and even amphibious farms. During normal times, people use these spaces. During floods, water temporarily takes over. It's engineering that works with nature, not against it. Here's where it gets even crazier. The sand engine project on the Delfland coast. Instead of building hard and expensive structures, the Dutch dumped 21 million cubic meters of sand, forming a two kilometer artificial peninsula. The cost 70 million euros. But here's the stroke of genius. They let nature do the work. Winds and currents naturally redistribute the sand along the coast for 20 years. This creates wider beaches, higher dunes and better coastal protection no maintenance, no additional cost, just physics and time. It's the world's first mega soft beach nourishment project and it's working perfectly. It has already nourished more than three kilometers of coastline and created 35 hectares of new beach. Look, here's the thing. Other countries spend billions building concrete breakwaters that need constant maintenance. The Netherlands built a beach that repairs itself that's 21st century engineering. Now let's zoom out. Why is the Netherlands so far ahead? The answer lies in the mindset. They don't see water as the enemy. They see it as a partner. The country invests 4% of GDP in water management. That's 24 billion euros annually. For comparison, it's more than many countries spend on defense. They created the water boards the oldest democratic institutions in the country, dating back to the 13th century. These independent authorities manage dikes, gates, pumping stations, and water quality with their own budgets and their own elections. It's democracy literally built on water management and Dutch expertise is spreading. Dutch engineers are consulting on projects in more than 140 countries. They helped New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina they're working with Bangladesh to protect 160 million people. They've advised Shanghai, Tokyo, Miami, and London. When the world needs water solutions, they call the Netherlands. But what about real viability? We have to talk about the challenges. Sea level is rising faster than previous projections. Four millimeters per year along the Dutch coast. By 2100, scientists predict a rise between 40 centimeters and 1 meter 30. In extreme scenarios, up to 2 meters, the cost to adapt the entire country. Estimates reach 1 trillion euros by 2100. That's 11,000 euros per Dutch citizen. And some projects have been delayed. Mass flock to two-faced environmental protests. The room for the river program had to relocate families. Not everything is perfect. But here's the counterpoint. The cost of doing nothing, incalculable. Studies show that floods without adequate protection would cause losses of 300 billion euros. In a single catastrophic storm, 17 million displaced. Total economic collapse. 
compared to that, 1 trillion euros over 75 years seems like a smart investment. And the Netherlands isn't stopping. They're already planning the next generation. The Delta program until 2050 envisions modular floating constructions, complete amphibious cities, offshore aquatic farms, and artificial intelligence systems to predict and respond to floods in real time. Imagine sensors throughout the coast communicating instantly with automated gates. That adjust water levels before storms even arrive. There's also the pilot project of self-sustaining floating islands. Modular platforms that can be connected, creating entire neighborhoods. Each module measuring 25 by 40 meters can support buildings up to five stories. They generate their own energy, treat their own water, and produce their own food. It's science fiction becoming reality. Here's something most people don't realize. The Netherlands' battle against water shaped all of Dutch society. The famous Dutch pragmatism. It comes from centuries dealing with unpredictable floods. The culture of consensus and cooperation. Necessary when everyone depends on the same dikes to survive. Even Dutch egalitarianism has roots here. When a flood comes, it doesn't distinguish between rich and poor. And now this mindset is exporting global solutions. The Dutch concept of building with nature is influencing projects. In Vietnam, where oyster farms protect coasts. In Indonesia, where mangrove forests are restored as living breakwaters. In Florida, where wetlands are being rebuilt to absorb storms. The Dutch approach isn't just about technology. It's about philosophy. Are you ready for the final truth? By 2050, experts predict that one billion people will live in coastal zones threatened by rising seas. Miami, Shanghai, Mumbai, Lagos, Bangkok, all face existential threats. And all are looking to the Netherlands for answers. Because here's what the Netherlands proved. You don't need to abandon coastal cities. You don't need to accept climate catastrophe as inevitable. With smart engineering, adequate investment and political will, you can build a future where humans and water coexist. It's not utopia. It's Dutch reality. Think about what we've seen. A country that should be submerged doesn't just survive but thrives. They transformed vulnerability into advantage, desperation into innovation, existential threat into global leadership. And they did it not by fighting against nature, but by dancing with it. The Netherlands is building land where there should be ocean. They're creating cities that float. They're designing beaches that regenerate themselves. They're reinventing what it means to live on the coast in the 21st century. And the most impressive part? They're just getting started. Here's the question you need to ask. If a country smaller than West Virginia can rewrite the rules of coastal engineering, what's stopping the rest of the world? The answer? Nothing but will. Are you ready for a world where cities float, where rivers flood by design, where beaches grow on their own, and where the ocean is no longer a threat but an ally? Because that world already exists in the Netherlands, and it's coming for the rest of us. This isn't the end. It's just the beginning. If you were impressed by Dutch engineering, leave your like and subscribe to the channel for more documentaries about the world's most incredible projects.